The first dilemma is from Dan. I've had my YouTube channel for about nine months now, but I also had a separate one in the past that I deleted for about two years. I remember when I first started making YouTube videos, I was filled with so much drive and exhilaration for YouTube. I used to make skits because I was inspired about certain content creators and believed I could get to their level of success as well. This is what my first channel was all about. I amassed 300 subs in one year. But soon, making skits started to feel like a drag and I didn't want to be known as the funny guy anymore, so I transitioned to making self-help content because I thought I could provide value. Once I did that, my views dropped significantly on my previous channel because I guess my viewers just wanted the skits. But I didn't want to do that anymore. I deleted my old channel because I wanted a fresh start. I made a new one and started to make self-improvement videos and tried to add my own twist to them by talking about my personal experiences. Plus, I was posting decently consistently with about two videos per week. But as I said before, it's been nine months and I'm now stuck in a rut once again. I'm losing the drive to make content. I can't seem to think of a new video idea because I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over again, just in a different way. Because there's only so much you can say regarding self-improvement. And lately, I haven't been feeling like making videos at all. I tried forcing myself yesterday, but it didn't work out so well. I would be lying if I said the numbers didn't have a part to play in this rut. I've only amassed 45 subs in about 9 months and the views haven't been hitting at all. I'm just kind of stuck right now because I want to turn YouTube into a business, but I keep struggling with content, inspiration, and the lack of direction. I've even been considering other business models because I have the entrepreneurial spirit within me. Any suggestions? My channel is Danigan. Well Dan, first of all, I know exactly what you're talking about. So as you guys may or may not know, I went through a similar transition myself in that I used to film public interviews, Tinder videos, and just content that was generally predicated on entertainment as opposed to education. And that's not to say that those two things are mutually exclusive, but if you've been following my channel for a while or if you've done that research, those videos are still there, then you'll know that the transition was pretty profound. Now with that being said, Self-development is kind of a dead end. This is something that I've realized over time and this is something that I've kind of wanted to address for a while. So I wanna go ahead and put this disclaimer out there. If you're doing self-development videos on YouTube, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that you cannot make a prosperous living or take that to the next level. Turn that into a personal brand or even an extended brand that makes you way more money than the channel itself would ever make you. But understand that the primary purpose of self-development is to get people to stop watching your videos. So in other words, you not getting views on your self-development channel is not necessarily an indication that your videos are not successful and that they're not making an impact. Because something that I've learned is that if people are applying your content, that means that it's working, but it also means that they're not going to spend as much time on YouTube watching your videos or anyone else's videos because they no longer need them. And that's kind of the catch-22 that a lot of self-development YouTubers find themselves in. And if you notice, most self-development YouTubers, over time, they begin to branch out into other things. Me, for example, I've begun to branch out into writing more. I've realized that writing is something that has pretty much unlimited prospects moving forward, whereas self-development, at a certain point, you are being repetitive. There's no way around that. If you're gonna post consistently, which you have to in order to make a living, you're gonna have to be repetitive. Now, one way that you could spice it up is you could implement some of the humor and entertainment into your self-development videos, a la Ice Cold JT. Great example of intertwining two passions, okay? Ice Cold JT told me himself, he told me face-to-face -face that he does value entertainment. And there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like a lot of people, excuse my voice, <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people, they conflate entertainment with being a degenerate. They feel like if you consume any amount of entertainment at all, if you're consuming anything that isn't super, super valuable and value packed and dense with nothing but information, nothing but education, then the content isn't worth watching. But entertainment is valuable in its own right as well because it makes you feel good. As long as your content isn't centered around controversy, putting other people down, so on and so forth, if you're just spreading good vibes and making people laugh while also providing value, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Or perhaps if you have another passion such as filmmaking, you can become a Cole Hastings type of YouTuber. And I'm dropping these names. Obviously, you should never try to be another YouTuber, but you can use their framework as to how you will operate your channel. Okay, Hamza, for example, I saw that he started to branch out into streaming more. 
And I'm sure that that's something that will be very, very prosperous for him should he decide to continue doing that. And I'm sure that he'll also operate other businesses that go beyond YouTube if he hasn't started doing that already. You see, self-development, like I said, is a dead end. It is a dead end. And if you accept that, then you can not only make your peace with it and operate from a space of mental clarity instead of getting in your head about why you're not getting views, but you can also open the door to other potential opportunities because you're not investing your ego into it anymore. You see, my views dropped. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. I've noticed my views dropped substantially over time. And what I realized is, aside from the traditional ebbs and flows of any YouTube channel, I've realized that my views dropped not because my quality of content got worse, not because I as a person became less insightful or less valuable, but it's because people no longer need my videos. At a certain point, if my videos are doing what they're supposed to be doing, then you shouldn't need to watch my videos anymore. Some of you probably watch all of my videos because you like me as a person, and I appreciate you for that. But ultimately, if we're just approaching this from an exchange of value standpoint, okay, you're exchanging your time, you're exchanging your life for insight and value that I can provide you with, then if I'm continuously making that transaction with you, something's not right. And what I've realized is that that's the nature of this niche. It's a catch-22, but the sooner you accept that, the sooner you can do it from a place of abundance because you know that even when you're not getting views, you're still making an impact. You see, you said that you got 45 subscribers in nine months, and I know that doesn't seem like a lot of people to you when you're comparing yourself to someone like me or Ice Cold JT or Hamza or Cole Hastings or any other self-development YouTuber. But what you have to understand is that 45 people is a lot of people. A lot of you guys cannot speak in front of 45 people, much less thousands of people. So what you have to understand is that 45 is a lot. One is a lot. You can change one person's life and that person can go on to be the president of the US or the prime minister of another country. You never know what type of impact you've actually made on people already at this point, much less moving forward, the extended impact that that person or those people will have on other people. Your impact is not quantifiable through the numbers and that is how you have to approach self-development content creation if you want to maintain your peace of mind. Believe me when I tell you that I learned that the hard way. I learned that through experience. If you wanna be a self-development YouTuber, I am not here to stop you. But if your primary goal is to just be as rich as you possibly can and be as successful as you possibly can with quantifiable metrics, doing purely self-development videos is not the way to do that. It's just not. Now, like I said, you can implement other aspects of yourself, different aspects of your passions, such as humor or potentially filmmaking, writing. There are a lot of different ways in which you can integrate that value in a way that's maybe more digestible and has more mass appeal, but you have to understand that that will also potentially dilute your message, even if just a little bit. So it's kind of up to you to decide that, but understand that YouTube is really one of those things that you have to love doing. Because if your passion is solely contingent upon the numbers, upon the quantifiable metrics, YouTube will be one of the most depressing jobs that you can ever do. Take it from me. But if you learn to approach it with the abundance mindset and use it as a way to project your passions, maybe make entrepreneurial content, then hey, YouTube is highly, highly rewarding. It's very, very rewarding work, and the money is just the icing on the cake. With that being said, the next dilemma is from E2 Trappy. Yo, what's good? What's good, E2 Trappy? I'm kind of annoyed, not gonna lie. I do a lot of stuff despite my age. I work out, track my food, meditate, take cold showers, and have a side hustle amongst other things. I try my best to stay consistent with all of these things, and to be fair, I'm doing a pretty good job. For some context, I'm Nigerian, but I live in Ireland with my mom, aunt, younger brother, and cousins. My main dilemma is no one seems to take me seriously and that sometimes leads to me distancing myself from everyone. Sometimes they don't understand what I do or my motives and make comments I don't appreciate. The only person who understands me is my brother who always supports me. I also used to act very goofy and I had unknowingly built a reputation as a goofball. What do I do so people can take me seriously? So E2 Trappy, first of all, I just wanna point this out. I noticed that this seems to be a problem amongst people in Ireland. I don't know why 
Ireland seems to be such a closed-minded place. I've never been there, so I guess I can't really make a blanket statement like that. But I get a lot of emails that look almost exactly like what you said from people from Ireland. I don't know what it is about Ireland, but if there's anybody from Ireland watching this who's in that same type of situation, comment down below. Okay, you guys need to start networking with each other. You have the means to connect with other people who resonate with you at a deeper level than the people around you. Now, with that being said, if you want to change your reputation, it starts with consistency. You have to consistently set goals and achieve those goals. And I'm not saying that you need to project all of your goals onto other people and rub your achievements in people's faces, but let it be known that you have set out a goal and that you plan on achieving it. And then fulfill that promise to yourself. By fulfilling promises to yourself, you build up an inner reputation that projects outwardly. You see, when you trust yourself and you no longer see yourself as a goofball, then you're able to change your outer reputation. There will be a time delay. There will be a bit of a buffer where people are still adjusting to the new you. Because a lot of times people's frame of reference for who they are is contingent upon you or the people around them. So you have to start off by breaking that cycle and changing your internal reference point. It doesn't matter what they think of you. It doesn't matter whether or not they think you're a goofball. What matters is what you think about yourself. And if what they're saying is bothering you or if what they think is bothering you, then clearly a part of you still believes that you're a goofball. Now, understand that there's nothing wrong with being a goofball. There's nothing wrong with being humorous, with being able to enjoy the small pleasures in life. But at the same time, if you want to find a more balanced reputation, it starts within. You have to change the way that you view yourself and understand that no matter what you do, you can't please everybody. Kendrick Lamar said it himself. You can't please everybody. You simply can't. And as you begin to explore the world, as you begin to potentially leave where you're from and see different things, meet different people, you realize that. You can't please everyone, so focus on pleasing yourself, your inner self, not just your ego. Focus on pleasing the part of yourself that speaks to you through your intuition. You feel intuitively like you want to become a more serious person or somebody who's taken more seriously. Start off by taking yourself more seriously. <laughs>